Um, so PPP is the, the feature-packed industry standard for connecting WAN devices. Uh, PPP, even though it's a, just a layer two protocol, it actually has three sub-layers that help it function. So right here, you can kind of get an idea that, you know, at the bottom here, we've got layer one, physical layer. At the top here, we have layer three, the network layer. And then all three of these right here are technically uh, layer two data link, but they're, they're different sub-layers of PPP. So PPP sublayer one, uh, ISO HDLC. PPP uh, uses the standard, uh, the industry standard HDLC, not the Cisco proprietary HDLC, as a base to establish connectivity between devices. Um, the LCP uh, layer above this is responsible for negotiating the, the features that will actually be supported, though. So moving on to to LCP, uh, link control protocol, or the sublayer uh, sublayer number two of PPP. Uh, the LCP sublayer negotiates PPP features including authentication, callback, compression, and multi-link. Um, authentication requires a username and password in order to establish a connection. Adding a layer of security, the, uh, the two supported authentication methods are PAP and CHAP. Um, so <coughs> password authentication protocol, or PAP, uh, progresses as follows. Um, a client dials up a router running PPP, and th this is kind of... Um, all, all of this terminology here is kind of thought of from the, the perspective of dialing into a router rather than two routers just like trying to connect to each other. But So a client dials up a router running PPP. After the link is established, the client sends its username and password at the, the LCP feature layer. A PPP router checks the username and password against its user database and allows or denies the, the client. So there's, there's a few problems with this. Um, because the client is primarily responsible for sending authentication packets, PAP is susceptible to playback attacks. Um, the username and password are also sent in clear text. So those are the, the two major ones. So CHAP took this a step further and improved upon both of those. So CHAP, or Challenged Handshake Authentication Protocol, is much more secure. Um, it basically works like this. Client dials to a router running PPP. The router sends a challenge message to the client immediately. Client responds with the hash of its configured password, so it doesn't even send the password; it, it sends the the hash. Um, so the the password never even traverses the line, so there's no problem of that potentially being confiscated by a hacker or someone sitting in the middle. The router looks up the password hash against its database and allows access if it matches. After the client is authenticated, the router resends authentication messages at random intervals, requiring the client to authenticate again when prompted. So. It takes care of the, the password issue using hashes. Um, it also uh, it, it isn't as susceptible to playback because one, as soon as it tries to connect, it sends a, a challenge message, and then the uh, the router on the far end basically forces the client to re-authenticate over time just randomly. So the you know if you happen to crack it once and get through, unless you have all that data saved and set up with the username and password and everything you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of connection. Um, callback functionality, which was one of the, the features we talked about um, or mentioned just briefly a minute ago, enables a PVP dial-up server running PVP to use a predefined number to call back to the person who initially dialed into the location. So it kind of adds an extra uh, layer of security. So basically the way this works, a user dials into a router using PPP and authenticates. Upon successful authentication, the router terminates the connection and dials the user back at the predefined number configured by the admin. Upon reconnect, the user authenticates again. Upon a successful authentication, the user is granted network access. So this is a completely um, optional, you know, as all of those things we were talking about are optional portion of PPP. But man, that, that adds a, a really thick layer of, of um, security because not only do you have to go through these multiple authentications, but unless you're at that predefined number that, that's already configured in the router, it's going to kill that connection and try to dial that number. If you're not still there to pick up and authenticate, it's not going to do anything. So the chances of you just dialing in from some random number and not the predefined location is uh, very, very difficult. Or difficult to sustain anyway. Um, and then compression uses some CPU and memory resources to make better use of bandwidth. There's, uh, I'm not going to go real into detail on the, the three types that they talk about. There's a couple pages that talk about uh, these in the book, but the, the three main types that you'll need to be familiar with are stacker, predictor, and the Microsoft point-to-point -point compression. 
And then uh, PPP Multilink enables you to bundle multiple WAN connections into a single logical connection. So uh, if you guys are familiar with MLPPP, Multilink PPP, it has two major benefits. Uh, one, you can check utilization on a single line rather than analyzing the individual links in the bundle, if you're trying to uh, check utilization, that is. And then the, the physical links in the bundle enjoy exact load balancing. So by exact load balancing, I mean they, they go to the point of like breaking up frames so that uh, you're, you're getting the exact number of uh, bits on each side. So it, it is very well uh, load balanced. So that's the sublayer number two, uh, LCP. Sublayer three, NCP, or Network Control Protocol. Uh, NCP is what allows multiple network protocols to work over PPP. Um, TCP IP has a connector called IPCP that enables TCP IP to run over PPP. Um, most of the time you're probably, I mean, especially today, you're probably going to be just running TCP IP anyway, but it, it's nice that it can adapt to other things. So if you, for some reason, had to run IPX SBX, it has a connector called IPX CP. Um, Cisco actually engineered a, a protocol or a, a connector called CDP CP so that Cisco Discovery Protocol can work over PPP. Um, and if, if you ever come up with a new protocol or something that isn't defined already, you can write a new just the connector for it so that it'll also work with PPP. So, you know, if, um, if something, you know, say we advance beyond TCP IP at some point, PPP is still a, a valid protocol because you can run other protocols across it with, uh, with a properly written connector. So configuring PPP uh, without any options is very simple. Um, it's effectively config T, jump into the interface, and then encapsulation PPP, you're done. The, the configuration can become a lot more complex though once you start adding some of those optional features we talked about in, uh, in the sublayers. <coughs> so uh, configuring PPP authentication, the, the, Cisco, or the CCNA focuses uh, PPP configuration on two Cisco routers connecting over a WAN link rather than dial up PPP. Uh, because of this, authentication is gonna be two way. So configuring PPP authentication, and again, this is just a feature of PPP. It's not necessarily something that has to be there, but you may be asked to add it. Um, the CCNA focus is PPP configuration on two routers. Can I, oh, I just said that. Uh, usernames and passwords are case sensitive, and the username on each router must match the host name of the router on the opposing side. So you know, if you've got a, a router named Bob trying to connect to a router named uh, John, the username for Bob is it's going to try to use as John, and likewise, the username John is going to use to access Bob is going to be Bob. Um, so to set up CHAP authentication, turn on PPP encapsulation, configure the necessary host names, create user accounts on each side of the connection, and then turn on CHAP PPP authentication. So we've got exactly that situation here. So in this case, we've got a host name Robin and a host name Pigeon. They got a single serial link connecting them. Uh, 10.2.2.1 and 10.2.2.2 on each side. So on Pigeon, config T, username Robin, password Cisco, interface serial zero, encapsulation PPP, and the PPP authentication chat to enable that option. And then basically same thing over here, but different username and password. Um, username Pigeon, password Cisco, interface serial zero, encapsulation PPP, PPP authentication chat, and you're done.